Oh, we're two minutes past the hour. Can I start? Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever your time zone is. And welcome to this um, Momentum Routine Immunization, Transformation and Equity, and Zero Dose Children and Definitions and Measurement. Um, today, February 14th and 2024. Can I have the next slide? Um, today, we do have the webinar offered in both English and French. And um, please use the interpretation icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen to listen to today's webinar. Um, you will see it at the uh, bottom there like a globe. It looks like a globe and choose whether you want to listen in English or in French. Can I have the next slide? Uh, today, for, for uh, questions, uh, if you want to write a question, please use the Q&A function to ask questions during the presentations or to ask for technical help. Please do not use regular chat for that. And then use the chat feature to introduce yourself and share your thoughts uh, during the presentations. So the Q&A function strictly for asking questions or asking for technical help during the presentation, the chat feature to introduce yourself and share your thoughts uh, during the presentations. Next slide. I just want to introduce our great speakers today. We've got a wonderful team. Uh, we've got Dr. Jessica Shearer, who is the Monitoring and Evaluation uh, Learning Lead, uh, Momentum Routine Immunization, Transformation and Equity. Uh, welcome, Jessica. Then we've got Dr. Eme uh, Chikola, Chikomola, who's a, a medical director at the program Elagi de Vaccine, whatever it is. Uh, and he's obviously the AP manager in um, uh, uh, the, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Then we've got Dr. Grassa Matsine, the Immunization Technical Lead, Momentum Routine Immunization, Transformation and Equity. And Dr. Jasim Udin, who is an Emeritus Scientist at the Health Systems and Population Studies Division uh, in uh, Bangladesh. I welcome to the speakers. And I'm Chilunga Puta, I'm the Senior Immunization Data Advisor for the Momentum Routine Immunization Transformation and Equity. Um, wonderful, welcome to you all. With you all, we look forward to your presentations and your input into this webinar. Uh, next slide, please. So we've got um, a quite a packed agenda today. Um, I'll, I'll briefly introduce um, MRIT as a project. And then, um, I'll give you an... Uh, en tant que projet, puis ensuite, je vais devenir une vue d'ensemble sur le... And, um, and then we'll have Jessica introduce some of the, um, uh, the, the, the definitions around uh, the zero dose um, child defini definitions, and, and she'll give you a bit of background to that. And then we'll go into the presentations of the methods and experiences um, from a, a Democratic Republic of Con Congo, um, followed by Mozambique and followed by Bangladesh. Then hopefully we'll have time for discussions and for questions and answers. There's been a slight change in the, in the, in the sequence of uh, the countries. So instead of starting with Mozambique, we'll start with the Democratic Republic of Congo, and then we'll move to Mozambique and then to Bangladesh. And next slide, please. Okay, our project, um, which is MRIT for short, actually envisions a world in which all people eligible for immunization 
um, from infancy right through the life course, and particularly in the underserved and marginalized and vulnerable populations, we want to be sure that these people are regularly reached uh, with high quality vaccination services and that they do use these services to protect their children and themselves against vaccine preventable diseases. Our next slide. So what is the toolkit uh, learning exchange series? Next slide, please. Um, first of all, I want to give you a background to this toolkit that we're talking about. Uh, we haven't finalized the naming of that toolkit, uh, but basically we, we are right now calling it a zero dose um, children do toolkit, toolkit for convenience. It is going to be um, to answer the need for a one-stop shop of resources to identify, reach, monitor, measure, and advocate for zero dose and under immunized children. Secondly, we are aware that there are many tools and guidance documents out there. They do exist. And this coming toolkit aims to pull them together in a, in a user-friendly um, fashion. And the toolkit is actually linked and is complementary to already available manuals and guides. Next slide, please. Um, what approach are we taking to actually revising this toolkit? Uh, one of the things they're doing is it precisely what we're doing now, the learning exchanges. So we look at different topics related to zero dose and under immunized children. And the goal is to get user uh, feedback and experiences to inform the toolkit, to build demand, to generate knowledge, accumulate knowledge, the skills, and for, for the methods and approaches outlined in that toolkit. So we hope that from these presentations, we'll get a rich feedback that will in turn feed into um, that final product. Uh, we also, uh, we have started actually work on a field test and the location is Nigeria. Uh, we've conducted interviews. We hope to use the tool that right there uh, in, in that place in a practical way and get user feedback. And finally, we have conducted and was, was to a certain extent touch back with a design collaborative of five to 10 countries who provide input into the design and content of this toolkit. Next slide. Okay, so I think at this point, I'll call on um, Jessica uh, to introduce us to some of the zero dose um, operational defin definitions, Jessica. Thank you so much, Chalunga, and thank you to everyone who was able to join us today for this important topic. Um, we, as Chalunga has mentioned, we have been collaborating with WHO and other partners on this toolkit to support to support all of you here to be able to identify, reach, monitor zero dose children. But every time we talk about this, of course, the question of definitions comes up which is why we are having this topic today on definitions. So first of all, um, I'm, I'll share some slides today on definitions, but we would love for you to put your questions and your comments and your thoughts about definitions in the Q&A. So you can see a Q&A button on the bottom of your Zoom bar, and please add your questions, thoughts, or comments there because this is an active and open discussion that we are having as a global community all the way down to operational levels. So just a quick framing slide on behalf of IA2030, why the focus on zero dose? The reason that we are moving towards measuring zero dose is because zero dose children signal communities and families and children who are systematically missed by routine services. It's a, it's a very important indicator of equity and um, what may be surprising to many of you is that there are actually more children globally who are considered zero dose compared to those who drop out. So it is imperative for us as an immunization community through an equity lens to be able to identify which children those are, why they are zero dose, and how we can reach them. Next slide, please. 
So we wanted to present the IA2030 uh, definition of zero dose children. This is the definition that what we call the operational definition also used by WHO and Gavi. You will see today from our amazing country presenters that they are making, they are perhaps refining this definition to make it work for them, to make it work for their use cases in their context. But let's start with this operational definition. So zero dose children are considered those who didn't receive any um, vaccines through routine services by the age of one year old. And officially, what we, we typically do is we look at the number of children who were less than one year of age, and then uh, the children who did not receive Penta-1 in particular amongst those children. And so this definition considers child to be zero dose if they did not receive Penta-1 in that first year of life for any reason, including they're hard to reach, left out, opt out, et cetera. Um, and this definition does exclude campaign doses. As I've mentioned before, the, the point or the, the rationale of the zero dose definition is to signal access to routine services. Next slide, please. Now, there are a number of known challenges with this definition. It's not perfect for all use cases. And indeed, one single definition probably cannot cover all of the use cases that we would have related to zero dose children. So first of all, as an IA2030 definition, it was developed in with the intention for global and sometimes regional monitoring over time across years, right? Um, the definition implies an annual birth cohort that you're looking at trends year after year. It works well for global monitoring. So it's it works well for WUNIC monitoring year on year for IA2030 monitoring. It can also work well at a regional level. But as we get lower and lower down the levels of the health system, the data behind the definition may not be of as accurate quality. Um, but in addition, the definition itself is not intended to or not designed for, and you can see some examples here, real-time measurement or point-in-time measurement. So if you go to a given community and want to know at that point in time, who, who are the zero-dose children, which children are zero-dose, or how many zero-dose children there are, uh, this definition may not be helpful for that point in time because it is taking all of the children under the age of 12 months and not necessarily considering um, age cutoffs, uh, different national definitions of when a child is vaccinated on time or late, et cetera. It also, of course, doesn't tell us because it's an aggregate definition, it doesn't tell us about who precisely is zero dose. And of course, it doesn't tell us why children are zero dose. And we have learned over the past few years as, as a community, we have been designing interventions to reach zero dose children that it's also not very helpful in real-time monitoring or evaluation of those interventions' ability to reach zero-dose children. So in other words, it is not very helpful for that type of timely monitoring that we might be looking for. So with all of these challenges in mind, um, and I'm sure you have others, please do add other challenges or reflections or questions to the Q&A so that during the discussion, we can discuss those challenges and the thinking around them and how we might be able to, how you might be able to overcome them for your very particular example. So if we go to the next slide, um, this is the perfect opportunity. So I'll pass this back to Chalunga to introduce this poll question to get your feedback. And then we'll hear from our our wonderful country speakers on how they are dealing with these challenges in their countries. Chalunga, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Jessica. Um, Parissa, can you set up the poll question for uh, the audience so that they can go to the Mentimeter? Yes, um, I think. Katie's just put the link in the chat or people can scan the QR code to go to the Mentimeter. Okay, we've got the link in the chat. Kindly click on that. I go to the Mentimeter and I answer those questions or question that is there, please. Thank you.
and parental help us, help us show the outcomes of that um, Mentimeter. Or oh, somebody doesn't have um, translation. I think that was just for the moment where you paused speaking. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Now I saw it in the chat where it says um, Bibian is saying I do not have translation. Is that correct? Okay, can we have the results projected, uh, person? Yes, give me just one moment. Or am I the one who's been seeing them? Okay. It's loading. Great, thanks. And there we are. Great. This is, does look exciting. <laughs> and let me just uh, make my screen bigger. Okay. Um, I think we can see a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of answers there, but what comes out really predominantly is not received Penta 1. And there is, um, of course, a, a bigger um, act there with inequity. Um, so uh, you can see for yourself the variety um, of um, of definitions around those um, you know those large words, and I think it highlights and and it goes to um, what we were talking about the difficulties, the practical definitions that might arise as you are actually trying to um, def define uh, what you're meaning when you say zero dose children. Thank you very much for that. And I think now we can... Merci d'avoir participé. Maintenant, nous allons passer à notre premier intervenant qui vient de la RDC. Donc. Merci, bonjour à tous. Euh, mon nom, c'est Aimé Chikomola. Euh, juste un moment de vidéo pour euh, voir si c'est possible de me voir. Alors, bonjour à tous les participants. Uh, je vous remercie d'être là pour ces échanges. Uh, I thank you for being here for this uh, learning exchange. I'm sorry because I, uh, my uh, bandwidth is not great, so I will turn my camera off. I'm sorry for that. Okay, so we will just um, talk about the definition of the uh, zero dose in, our, in DRC. The challenges that we have uh, relating to the definition in the, the processes, the process and the operation, and also some of the uh, key indicators that uh, we use to measure uh, the uh, zero dose children. So next uh, slide, please. And so the, in the definition, uh, we do separate the activities uh, so uh, we differentiate dans la routine nous prenons comme référence le bcg uh, uh, vaccination and so the reference is the bcg so any child who has not received the bcg i think uh, is what we use which gives us a very sensitive uh, measurement tool and so we use uh, uh, when we identify, we base ourselves on the B BCG. And so the uh, parent knows if uh, the child has received the vaccination in the, the arm or not. And uh, for the operational uh, definition, we do consider the uh, DTC1. Uh, uh, that's uh, what we consider a child who's uh, zero dose if they haven't received the DTC. Uh, and so that really helps us uh, refine our research and find the zero dose children. And so the definition um, is uh, the, the base principle is that uh, any child who has never received the anti-gene anti uh, targeted by the campaign is a zero-dose 
uh, child. And uh, if he's under 11 months and has not received uh, uh, the VPO, or uh, the, in, fact, in fact, we always use questions in the community to detect those children. And so we ask the uh, mom if the uh, child has received the vaccine orally, and uh, because in our calendar that is the only uh, vaccine that we give by uh, uh, drops, and if the child has received, uh, never received the vaccine in the thigh, and so we can also uh, treat them as a zero dose children. Uh, next slide, please. And so there is a process that was put in place in order to harmonize the definition. Uh, first, at the global level, we had exchanges with uh, at the level at the global level. We adapted at the country level with all the participants, and also we have developed uh, uh, rules and. Uh, uh, so that everybody uh, at the personal level could use the definition which was presented at the uh, CCIA CC, uh, level to be validated. And so at the operational level, the directions were translated uh, with the instructions of the uh, general secretary and, uh, and then were the uh, diffused throughout the different divisions, health divisions. So we do have challenges. We have challenges relating to the dispon disponibility of the uh, operation at the operational level. And we also have tools in place to identify the uh, zero dose children or under vaccinated children, but we still have uh, challenges with the disponibility of the tools at the operational level. And so we have um, a definition that uh, applies at the, uh, at the mass vaccination level that really creates a sort of confusion. So the uh, uh, field workers have uh, difficulty uh, to distinguish the difference that there is between zero dose during the mass campaigns and the zero dose during uh, the uh, systematic uh, vaccination. And so we also uh, allow to dis make a distinction between the children that are above 11 year olds and under 11 year olds, uh, because we can, uh, in the routine vaccination, we can uh, fill the gap uh, immediately. And so we have introduced the second dose uh, zip, uh, P, uh, for the e EPV and if I, but as we're still in the introduction phase, we uh, were not just yet certain that all the uh, workers know uh, the fact that we are now uh, in the two years of the calendar, vaccination calendar, and so we do have to define what will be the approach to uh, fill the gap. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, so uh, it's, of course, uh, between f five to nine months. I said 50 years, but five to nine months. And so uh, we... Uh, use the administration data to identify the children. The zero dose ch children who have been vaccinated, uh, are all, it's always with the administrative uh, data. And we do organize campaigns every year. So one uh, every year we do have a campaign and I mean a survey. And with this, these surveys, we do um, manage to identify the zero dose children and under vaccinated children using the uh, survey data. The other indicators are the number of children uh, between uh, five and 12 months were vaccinated with Penta 1. 
and the coverage of Penta 1. Those are uh, the indicators, and we often use them in different interventions um, in the Les campagnes de masse, etc. So during uh, the mass campaigns or the systematic uh, vaccination, etc. So that's what uh, I wanted to say. I think that we can go further during the discussion. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Amy. Um, please remember to put your, Q or your questions in the Q&A. Um, so that you can have your queries answered. Uh, we shall proceed now to Mozambique, uh, the next country to actually um, present on zero dose, its definitions and so on in that country, Mozambique, Dr. Grasso. Thank you, uh, Shilunga. Greetings, everyone. I'll take through. I'll take you through the presentation of Mozambique. Well, let me say that most of the things that Mozambique has presented, um, the colleague who preceded me has had already mentioned. But nevertheless, I'll also mention on the specific topics because they're similar. Um, next slide, please. So what are we talking when we when we mention the zero doses? The zero doses uh, term has been very frequent uh, nowadays, and not anyone who works in immunization uh, will miss this uh, zero dose aspect because it's crucial um, for the for the uh, delivery of equitable immunization intervention. Next slide. So in terms of contextualization, you can proceed. Um, we know that many investments and progress has been made in immunization, but performance of EPI in Mozambique specifically is always measured based on the children reached. So if we miss children in, in the community, it means that our performance is not, is not adequate. Um, and they obviously for many years, even adjusted, um, the performance of EPI has been stagnant. The quality of data and imprecise denominators have discredited the reported coverage, which means that even though we report very high coverages, it's still questionable um, because there are many issues related to the quality of data. And we also know that millions of children around the world continue not to receive vaccination, um, and this is justified by the growing number of susceptible population and the emergency of outbreaks of vaccine-preventable diseases. In Mozambique, for instance, in the past two years, the EPI has been battling with polio and measles, and obviously this is a result of immunity gap in the community, which is um, it's a result of not reaching all the children. Next slide, please. So as a result of extensive consultancy in June 2019, uh, Gavi approved the new five-year uh, five strategy, which is the Gavi 5.0. And the, the main vision of this strategy is leaving no one behind. Uh, and the mission of saving lives and protecting people's health, obviously uh, providing um, equitable and sustainable use of vaccines. And a central focus of the strategy is to reach the zero dose children and lost communities as a principle of equity. Next slide, please. Um, so what do we use as definition of zero dose and how do we calculate zero dose in Mozambican context? Um, children with zero dose are those who have not received any routine vaccination since birth. So anyone who has not, any children who has not received vaccine, we consider it zero dose. But for operational purposes, Gavi defines zero dose children as the children who have not received the first dose of the pentavalent one vaccine. And we also have the definition of lost or unserved communities, which are communities with zero dose or under immunized children. So those are the main terms that we will be addressing in this in this presentation. Next slide, please. And how do we calculate the zero dose in Mozambique? Uh, zero dose is estimated based on calculation uh, of the number of children under 12 months who have been vaccinated, uh, sub subtract subtracted by the number of children administered uh, PENTA-1 in the same time interval. So in terms of formula, we have the zero dose number, which will be um, the BCG minus the PENTA-1. Here we consider these children who will come out from this results, they are the zero dose. 
And in terms of percentage, obviously we will take the zero dose and uh, which equals the BCG minus penta one divided by BCG and um, multiplied by 100. So this is basically how we define the zero dose children in the community. Um, there are a lot of discussions around this, especially when we go to the to the most peripheral levels of the system, because uh, people understand that the zero dose is the one who never got the vaccine, which is not it's not wrong. But uh, the main challenge here is because the the children who have not had any contact with the health facility automatically we cannot count. So the the this um, method uh, of calculating based on BCG it's most reliable in our context. Next slide, please. So in terms of identification and outreach strategies, uh, for the identification, we use the red and rec record book, which is, is the rich uh, every district and rich every community um, strategy, uh, whether from a fixed post or mobile brigades and identified zero children, zero those children in those books. But we also triangulate data from the record books with um, data from the, the, the HIS2, uh, just to make sure that um, we don't miss any children in between the two sources of, um, of um, data recording. And after that, we train the community focal points um, for the implementation of red and red strategy, um, be it in registration of demographic events such as births, absent children, zero dose, etc., in the community. Um, we work um, hand in hand with the community focal points because they are the ones who are in the community and they are the ones who know the children, especially the ones um, that uh, have missed vaccination. That's why it's very important to have a very strong linkages with the community focal points and the community structures for the identification of zero dose children. And after that, um, we do implementation of active search um, based on a plan um, which comes out from this identification of children the community focal points and other community actors are the one are the ones who with uh, supervision of health workers they go to the communities and search the children and bring them back to the vaccination course either at health facility or at mobile brigades and then after that we move to uh, reach the children next slide please next slide where we use the red and red um, planning meetings, community meetings with focal points uh, to monitor the implementation of the strategy and discuss the challenges. This is the, the perfect platform to, to discuss these challenges because we have not only the health workers, but also other actors, uh, which sometimes are members of the community, um, uh, the community health committees and, uh, and other um, community structures that are very relevant to reach these children. Um, after the meetings, we do prioritization of communities based on the number of zero those children um, so that we can target the mobile brigades to those communities which have the highest number of um, zero those children first. And then we target other communities with uh, not so high numbers of zero those children. Uh, in those mobile brigades, we think that uh, integration is essential. We take the opportunity of um, looking and uh, reaching the zero dose children to integrate other essential interventions so that when the mobile brigade goes to the community, um, it not only offers vaccination, but also other interventions, which um, are, are very important, not only for the children, but also uh, MCH intervention. Uh, for this, we obviously rely on uh, good communication um, strategies, especially uh, communication for the main generation and interpersonal communication to make sure that people understand the importance of vaccinating the children and also um, they, they, they inform other people in the community, especially the mothers, um, so that they can go to the vaccination um, uh, posts. And finally, we do the monitoring of, of zero dose. Um, making sure that the children that we have identified come back to the health facility to be vaccinated. And in that sense, we make sure that we reach uh, the children in zero dose and obviously um, offer the immunization services. With that, I finished my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thanks so much, Grace.
um, fantastic presentation. Um, we'll move on. And may I remind you people again, please put your questions in the Q&A. Um, we move on to the next presenter, um, Dr. Jassi from Bangladesh. And could I please request those who are not presenting to make sure that um, the uh, mics are off. Thank you so much. Dr. Jasin, kindly um, take the yeah. stage. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, you know that, as we uh, know that, uh, that zero to children is a critical objective in global uh, health. And it is at the heart of immunization agenda 2030 strategy. Uh, but 81% of children now receive uh, the routine vaccine in uh, uh, income, uh, low income country, countries. Uh, recently, in Bangladesh, vaccination coverage is 80 to 84% for a last one de decade, it is in a stagnant. And uh, recently, Gabian Global Immunization Agenda 2030 have intensified their emphasis on equity to reach zero dose and under immunized children. Uh, we know all about this. To support this, we are working here in uh, uh, Gabi Country Learning Hub. I am sharing with you uh, the Country Learning Hub related activities, including zero dose definition, measurement, and some uh, experiences. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, the operational definition of zero dose uh, as according to Gabby definition, zero dose, the children who missed the first dose of uh, DTP vaccine, I mean, the, yeah, children who missed the first dose of DTP vaccine and under, uh, under immunized vaccine are children who missed the third dose of DTP vaccine and missed community means areas with high zero dose and under, uh, under uh, children. According to Gabby's de definition, which about uh, what we find and in Bangladesh, we are uh, following these definitions. Next slide, please. Oper uh, here is the operation in Bangladesh, how operationalized the zero uh, dose. In Bangladesh, Institute of DTP, pentabellant is uh, given to uh, the children, therefore, uh, pentabellum, uh, if a child uh, uh, miss any uh, first dose of pentabellum, then we, we consider it is a uh, zero dose. And if a child uh, who missed third dose of pentabellum, we, we, we consider that this is a uh, under immunized children. Missing of first, first dose of pentabellum, uh, zero dose, and missing of third dose of pentabellum is, is the, uh, uh, I mean, the miss under immunized uh, children. Yeah, please, next slide. Uh, how uh, we define this? In Bangladesh, the first dose of pentavalent is given to a child at 42 uh, days, I mean the six weeks. And subsequently, the second and third dose is given to uh, 28 days interval. I know all of I uh, know th uh, this. But it is essential for a child to receive all three doses of the pentabellum vaccine by the age of, uh, I mean, the 3.5 uh, uh, five month. Therefore, the age limit to, uh, we calculated here for uh, uh, measurement, 4.5 month, I mean, the 18, 18 uh, weeks, uh, 14 weeks the, uh, is 14 weeks is the end point for completion of third dose of pentavalent, but for any measurement, we uh, consider for, uh, 18 uh, weeks for uh, 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 defining or measuring, uh, uh, I mean, the zero dose. If a child missed made the first dose of pentavalent vaccine within the age of uh, 18, 18 weeks, then she, was con uh, she is considered as a zero dose in our, in, in, in this. Yes, please, next slide. Uh, yeah, here are the, uh, some methods related to, we have co uh, conducted a, uh, a rapid assessment and rapid assessment co uh, conducted uh, in uh, uh, several areas. Uh, these slides shows uh, for, uh, which areas and study population, as I mentioned, for 18, 18 weeks. Yeah? And also we collected uh, data for um, uh, rapid assessment, both, uh, I mean, the 
uh, secondary data, I mean the uh, quantitative data as well as uh, qualitative data, qualitative data for policy makers and service provider, and quantitative data uh, to uh, uh, load quality assurance sampling technique uh, for the, uh, Yeah, next slide, please. Uh, how we proceed, uh, process followed for uh, uh, identification of uh, uh, zero dose. Uh, initially, how we identify the uh, zero dose? Initially, identification of zero dose, uh, consultation with TPA stakeholders through different meetings, workshops, monitoring committee meetings, different committees, and analysis of secondary data. Secondary data includes coverage regulation survey data, DHIS2 data. And then we uh, verify those uh, data, field visit and collect it monthly API report, hard copy, and uh, 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 recheck the data and reanalysis of uh, the data through ranking of geo sub district and geolocation data and identification of district uh, 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 in a district for two areas for. Uh, some implementation research, the subsequent which will become uh, come up recently, and confirmation of missed communities, how collection of uh, primary data and analysis of primary data and data are collected lot, uh, using lot quality assurance technique, and identify socio demographic determinants of zero dose and under minute, and uh, how using uh, demographic and health, health survey data, and also for demand and supply side. Uh, uh, leading causes uh, for zero dose, uh, we did uh, qualitative uh, data collection, key information interview, and uh, IDIs. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, as I mentioned, I have already mentioned, I mentioned that data sources for measuring due to uh, zero dose, we used both secondary data, uh, secondary data, coverage evolution, survey data, DSS data, and the uh, uh, health survey data and primary data used used with lot quality assurance sub, uh, sampling, mapping of missed communities and quality key informant interview and in, in depth interviews uh, with the uh, service providers. Yeah, next slide, please. Uh, for LQS, uh, uh, this slide says sort how we uh, support uh, selected households and caregivers for interview. For interval. initially we selected districts. Secondary data from the secondary data as randomly we selected districts. Then we uh, districts uh, uh, select sub district analyzing uh, same as the secondary data. Then we go to the uh, please uh, the fournisseurs de services uh, et uh, avec des rapports mensuels donc. Et nous identifions uh, uh, supports we uh, uh, analysis with the for secondary data prevalence analyzed uh, of, of zero doses, 100 uh, minus coverage of penta one uh, multiplied by prime, uh, percentage. This is the secondary data analysis. And for primary data, we uh, analyze the uh, prevalence. So the number of children did not receive penta one divided by total number of children in the sample and the denominator and denominator multiply by 100, 100. Uh, in this way, the primary uh, data uh, prevalence of zero to six we uh, measured here. Yeah, next slide. Uh, this slide I, I would like to omit. We have already mentioned, please, next slide. Next slide. Yeah. And for quality data, we uh, analyze a framework approach, barbiter meta uh, uh, transcription, incorporation of field notes and other things, and data were uh, systematically coded, synthesized, and interpreted. Uh, uh, qualitative data also, yeah. Yeah, please. Next slide. And this slide shows the from LQS data uh, this, uh, using decision value. Uh, the areas are identified where the uh, zero dose uh, children are 
more and where it requires to provide the attention for through inter implementation research. So these slides shows and from LQS data, it also provide the uh, prevalence of uh, zero rose and under immunized children in those particular areas where uh, lot fertility uh, LQS were conducted. Yeah, please, next slide. And challenges related to zero dose definition. In, uh, here in Bangladesh, there is a uh, long standing uh, challenge. This is a denominator issue of DHS, uh, DHS2, because uh, birth registration is not uh, up, to, up to date here. Therefore, it requires to uh, set the denominator based on projection of total population. Therefore, it is a challenge to find the exact number of children. This is one challenge. And another one challenge, uh, general definition differ from the definition of existing EPI. As I mentioned, the catabellin uh, first dose, uh, missing of catabellin first dose is the uh, definition of zero dose. But in existing EPI, the definition of zero dose is uh, 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 definition of the providing polio first dose within the 14 days of after birth of which uh, in uh, newborn. Uh, this is the uh, definition of EPI parameter. So there was uh, some uh, confusion at the beginning uh, 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 related to definition of uh, uh, zero dose. Yeah. yeah, next slide please. Yeah, here are some recommendations related to uh, uh, for in identifying zero dose children. Use of DHS2 data is useful for initial identification of uh, zero dose areas. So, measures should be taken to improve quality of administrative data in the country. Uh, we know sometimes quality administrative data has some questions here. And denominator issue, issue uh, needs to solve. Uh, national surveys, such as coverage evolution survey and demographic health uh, survey, should provide micro level. Uh, here in, uh, in upper level district and above, above level uh, data are available, but micro level data uh, there should be provision to uh, analyze. Uh, and LQS survey can be widely used for identification and verification of mixed communities. Yeah, next slide, please. And yeah, thank you. Thank you all for patience here. Thank you so much. I was getting a little bit worried there. Um, thank you so much, so much, um, uh, Dr. Jasim. Wonderful presentation. We've had four great presentations from four great speakers, and I've got a number of questions and answers in the Q&A chat. And what I'll do is I'll start with the ones that have not been answered yet. And if I have a few minutes, I'll just run through the ones that have actually been answered. Uh, the first question came from Nancy Foreman. And it was concerning the campaigns, you know, uh, where she says, um, what really constitutes campaigns or what doesn't constitute a campaign and implications for a zero dose measurement. And uh, because this was a highly discussed topic where they had um, a, a meeting. Uh, so Carolina, maybe you would like to answer this question, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can see me and hear me okay. Um, so basically, we do have some guidance on what in in a campaign, what constitutes um, a routine dose and what is a supplementary dose. In fact, uh, we try to use the term supplementary immunization activity for campaigns where you don't ascertain the, the status of vaccination of the child or the person. And you just give the vaccine. And those are commonly done for polio, for measles, for yellow fever, for example, where you say you vaccinate everyone between, say, age six months and 59 months. And you give it those regardless of whether the person already had a dose or not. And normally those doses either don't get recorded or they just get in a special piece of paper or the finger gets marked. But they are not really usually documented properly for follow up. On the contrary, we have a different name that I don't know if people even know that name in countries, which is PERI or periodic intensification of immunization, uh, of routine immunization, which is more like the health weeks where you uh, do an intensification, but you do check the vaccination status of the person. You ask the caregiver, you look at the card to see what vaccines the person already has, 
and what vaccines the person needs. And then you give the vaccines accordingly. And then you record those in the card, in a tally and in a registry. And those are counted. So um, for this definition, for monitoring purposes, a child who has received a penta dose, uh, be it through outreach, be it through this periodic intensification or in a health facility, you count them. Uh, which is not the case if you just give an extra dose, let's say in an SIA. I hope this clarifies. I put in the chat and I will uh, in the replies and I will add um, a document that clarifies this. Thank you. Uh, thank you. There were two questions for Mozambique, which Grace has answered, um, but I think it would be nice if um, she just shared the answer now. Um, they were on um, what about your birth cohort? How do you define a zero dose for that? And then there was another one which was in uh, French, but I think it says what documents do you reference um, for collecting um, data for your zero dose, I think. Rasa, can you attend to those two? Um, yes, yeah. sure. For the first question, um, our birth court for zero dose is uh, under under twelve. However, um, depending in the cases, we can extend to under twenty four. So basically, we use the under under twelve for the for the birth dose court. Thank you. Um, did you answer the other one about the references that you use? Um, yeah, for the for this um, as a reference, we use the the Gavi strategy five point zero for the calculation okay. of zero dose. Yes. Okay. Thank you so so much. And there's another question from Brooke uh, Farinkoff. Um, earlier in the presentation, it was mentioned that the IA twenty thirty definitions is not as useful for real-time monitoring of strategies to reach zero-dose children. Could you please add a bit more detail about this? And I'll refer to this, this to Jessica Shearer. Hi, thank you, Chalunga. Yeah, Brooke, great, great clarification question. So yeah. um, I'll give an example to try to illustrate this point. When And this is assuming that the IA2030 definition that we've been talking about today is we typically use routine data to look at um, trends or changes in, in that indicator. And what we have found, of course, is that let's say you implement an intervention that is aiming to um, have more people come and get vaccinated with Penta-1 vaccine or is aiming to improve the health system so that more people can get vaccinated with Penta-1 and ultimately aiming to reduce zero dose. We find that the lack of smaller age disaggregations makes it difficult to know if you see month on month that your number of children being vaccinated with Penta-1 are increasing. It's hard to know, are those children all about six weeks of age, or had they had you reached formerly zero dose children in the sense that those were slightly older children, and that's why we really also appreciate Dr. Jasin's definition in Bangladesh how they're they're looking at children who are um, I think it's four point five months. So that's the point in time where they have said, okay, at this point the child is zero dose in our context because they have. They've, they're late or they've missed the opportunity to become vaccinated um, at the time they should have for Penta-1. So I, I hope that makes sense, but just kind of having more of that granularity to know, did we actually reach a child who was zero dose or have we been reach, have we been making services more accessible to children for that first dose of Penta? Both in a sense can be considered, you know, you're improving um, your coverage and you're, you're reducing the number of zero dose, but it's harder to know exactly what the circumstances of those children were. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jessica. And there's another question from Mustafa Dabo, Dabo and this is um, in French. I think Carolina has seen it. Can you just answer it and repeat it for the sake of, um, yeah, for, for, for the audience? Carolina? Could you repeat the question? Uh, which then one is it? A question from Mustafa Dabo. It says, 
Quelle est votre expérience sur le suivi des enfants à zéro dose qui, qui ont été récupérés afin de compléter le calendrier vaccine? Oh, OK. I will reply in French, so in case for the translation and the colleagues. Um, okay. la, la question qui a été posée, c'est par rapport à la complétude de, de ce calendrier vaccinal des enfants qui ont, touché, ont été touchés avec la Penta 1. Donc, il ne devient uh, plus zéro dose, mais il devient d'enfants touchés pour la vaccination. Mais c'est pour dire que c'est très important de compléter leur calendrier vaccinal, c'est-à-dire les vacciner avec les trois doses de Penta, les trois doses de polio oral, la BPI, la rougeole, la euh, rougeole rouveole, etc. Donc, euh, c'est-à-dire que c'est très important euh, en plus vérifier le, les taux d'abandon et continuer à vérifier les taux d'abandon. On peut dire que dans la, malheureusement, la plupart des pays plus faibles, il y a un euh, nombre élevé de, de enfants zéro dose, mais en plus, le taux d'abandon est très, très élevé. Et je ne sais pas le cas exact de Mozambique, mais l'idée, c'est exactement de faire, de compléter les calendriers et pas seulement toucher les enfants avec une seule dose de, de Penta. À vous. Thank you so much, um, Carolina. Um, then there's another question for Grassa. Um, I think actually there were two. I noticed, I think, one she's answered and one she's answering right now. Um, are you able to address those questions, Grassa? Uh, yes, the first question from uh, Dr. Gayu. Yeah, that's, that's really one of the biggest challenges. Um, using the, the, the BCG and Penta-1 for the calculation of zero dose. Uh, but we assume that the other children um, which are missed by this calculation, they have never had contact with the health facilities. So the, 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 the most realistic way of um, having these children and reaching them is through the community identification and community mapping. That's why we stress the importance of involving the community structures, uh, the different community structures, um, so that they can be trained in, in um, knowing what is zero dose children and uh, and help us in identifying not only the zero dose children, but also the ones who have never got vaccinated. And uh, since they are in the community, they, they should know who is the mother who, who is pregnant and who delivered at home and didn't take the children to the health facility and then bring the children um, through this, this mechanism. That's the most realistic thing. To, to be done in those cases. Um, the second question, uh, I think it's mostly a comment um, where he says that uh, choosing the drop between BCG and P1 as zero dose can underestimate this number. Maybe uh, you should all the time increase your estimation considering BCG coverage. I think this is, this is correct and we agree with this uh, comment. That's all, Shimonga. Thank you so much, everyone. We are right on the top of the hour. And I'll Chalunga. just like to... to... So, Chalunga, sorry to interrupt yes, you. Yes, I, I think there's one, one more uh, comment or question that Carolina okay. just wanted to emphasize. Okay, okay. please go ahead. Carolina, back to you. Thank you. I, I just want to make sure that, that we understand that the definition of no penta uh, for children who have reached 12 months as an indicator is really for monitoring how we are doing operationally as we saw in the countries you have to have the usual mechanisms to identify children who are not vaccinated the falters and then complete schedules so so this does not replace red rec all the approaches it's just a new way of framing the the efforts to reduce children who are never touched but complete vaccination schedules with them and, and that's, I think, the take home message. It, it's just, let's keep the focus on the Immunization Agenda 2030 goal of reaching everyone and everywhere with all the vaccines. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carolina. Um, please don't forget to do evaluation. Uh, you can scan the QR code that is given there below uh, or join the link. I think there's a link somewhere in your invite. Uh, for the evaluation. This is important for us. So kindly don't forget to do that. 
Um, having said that, I really want to thank you all for a very, um, yeah, it's been a great webinar. Um, thank you so much for those who prepared presentations, presented them for the active audience. Uh, we really thank you for it. Thank you for your time. And have a good day, good afternoon, good morning, good night, as the case may be. And uh, yes, good. Uh, uh, there's another Q&A in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And there's just a comment that what is your BACG coverage? I think you can do this offline, uh, Palenfo and Russell. Um, yeah, we thank you so much all for your participation. And I think we'll end the, uh, the webinar there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.